questions. Sabrina Justison here from 7sistershomeschool.com and we're going to spend about 15 minutes talking about childhood into teenhood into adulthood actually problems. And now we're not having connection problems. Yay! Um, yeah, really most people survive it. They do. So first of all, start with some hope. <clears throat> now, if you are joining me live and you type something into the comments, then I can see little stuff show up on my screen and I can be like, hi, and I'll be excited to see you. So if you're here, let me know that you're here. Um, okay, so adulting. This is like the thing. The last few years people made this word and um, what does my father call it? Oh, yes, he says, I hate verbing. When you take nouns and you just turn them into verbs and start using them that way. So I'm sorry to my father, but um, this is, uh, let me see, swipe left too. There we go. That's what I was supposed to do. I think I swiped left. No, I don't know. I'm doing something wrong, but that's okay. As long as you can still see me and hear me and type comments, it's all good. So adulting, yeah, it's this verbing thing that somebody created a few years ago. And um, the truth is that it's a pretty good one. I mean, don't tell my father I said that, but I actually think this one works well as a verb. There is a lot to handling life as an adult that is just sort of hard to drop neatly into one category or another. And it's just sort of the, the coming together of all those pieces of responsibility combined with the emotional sense that you're really not quite grown up enough to be doing all of this and to be responsible for it. Um, that's a lot of what adulting, I think, is getting at. It's, it's the clash of those two things. I have all of these things, opportunities, responsibilities, the world is in front of me. And at the same time, I don't really feel like I'm ready to do this. And if we're honest, a lot of us who are 20 something, 30 something, 40 something, 50 something, 60 something, still feel that way sometimes. So adulting is a real struggle. Let's not make fun of it. Instead, let's talk about how we can well equip our teens in our homeschool high schools. <clears throat> All right, there are a few areas that are not typically addressed in your regular academic curriculum. In fact, they're often not even touched on in your really cool elective curriculum. And we all know electives are some of the most fun pieces of high school. But there are some basic areas that trip up a lot of young adults and even older adults who have never been equipped to deal with them. So we're going to hit on those categories and then we're going to throw a few practical strategies out there to help you put some stuff in your teen's toolbox. Now, one more thing before we jump into those categories. You cannot watch this Facebook Live video and then know the five ways to guarantee that my child will have an excellent life as an adult. You can't even watch this Facebook Live video and come away with the five things that will guarantee that my child will be happy going into adulthood. There are no guarantees for how this is going to shake out. No guaranteed outcomes, right? I think I learned that from the Fletchers at Homeschooling in Real Life, but it's oh so true and probably not original with them. We cannot guarantee outcomes. So what I'm talking about today are some categories that you as a homeschool parent would do well to address with your teens, to spend some time and some attention, and to essentially give each of these categories a tool and hand it to your teen and say, tuck this away in your toolbox, you have this skill now, or you have this piece of knowledge, or you have this framework for understanding, or you have this resource to follow up on when you get in over your head down the road. But this is in your toolbox, and someday, if you need it, you can take that tool out and you can use it. <clears throat> you cannot, unfortunately, guarantee that they will take that tool out when they're 19, or 25, or 37 and a half. They get to choose how they're going to use those tools, but you get to choose to put those tools in the toolbox. Okay, so here we go. Five categories, tools. First of all, finances. This is a biggie, y'all. It was a biggie for us. The world has changed so much in so many ways and keeping up with what all the changes are and what are the new forward moving things that we need to equip our teens for, that's tough. 
But this one, this has been tough since the beginning of time. Once you're an adult, you need to be able to provide for your material needs. That means working, or if you are not the primary breadwinner in your home, it means managing money well. It means understanding the dangerous things that can happen with money. Now, the specific ways that the world of money works, that changes all the time. And with technology over the last 15, 20 years, oh my, so different. But the fact that you will need financial management skills for positive, powerful adulting, that's been true from the beginning and it's always going to be true. The basic math things that you're required to do in high school, do not actually put this tool in your toolbox. I cannot remember the last time that I used any algebra or geometry when paying my bills for the month. Nope, they don't help me balance my bank account either, come to think of it. And when I applied for a mortgage, no one asked me the Pythagorean theorem. I'm just saying, now maybe we used a poor mortgage you know, company that should have asked for the Pythagorean theorem, but those kinds of things, they're, they're not gonna help you. You need a curriculum that is dedicated to financial literacy. And this is just a shameless plug. Sarah Hibbert Hayes at sevensistershomeschool.com has created an absolutely unique curriculum for homeschool high schoolers. And it is called Financial Literacy from a Christian Perspective. It is interactive. She updates it every year to keep the links um, working throughout. It's hands-on. It is so practical. We've recently had a post from a homeschool graduate on the sevensistershomeschool.com website, a blog post. You can look at it, it's been in the last um, about 10 days, and it's called Homeschool Graduate something, something, something about financial literacy being awesome. I probably should have put that in my notes before I started this broadcast. Anyway, my apologies, but if you search for Homeschool Graduate Financial Literacy on the blog, you will find it. And one of the things that the uh, author of that post points out is that beginning right after high school graduation, and honestly beginning during high school too, every decision that you make has some sort of financial implication. There is some consequence associated with it. Now as parents, we know that even when our children are eight years old, many of the decisions that they make have a financial consequence. The difference is we bear that consequence because they're little people. But teens need to be learning about and practicing for that change in the season of life when they will now be responsible for those consequences. And they need to understand how that applies to credit and debit cards, to student loans, to uh, basic budgeting for um, income and outgo, and looking at plans for retirement, all of that stuff, insurance policies, all of those things are in a good financial literacy curriculum. So number one tool to put in the toolbox, financial literacy. They need to know something about how to manage money. Second is how to handle paperwork. And yeah, we, we spend a lot of time making sure that they're getting the computer skills that they need, the tech. And the truth is that they know more tech than we do. And sometimes I feel stupid when I can't get my phone to do what I want it to do and I can hand it to a teenager and they can do it like that. However, I have been at the motor vehicle with a young adult child and we have been handed a clipboard with actual paper on it with little squares and lines and they give you a ballpoint pen and they tell you to go fill this out. And I have seen that same tech savvy kid, all the color just drain out of their face. And they do the whole, mom, can you look at this? Can you make sure I'm doing this right? Okay, paperwork is not gone yet. And the details involved in filling out a form correctly in following all of the directions in reading the fine print these are skills that our teens will need going into adulthood. And you all know somebody in their 40s who is still an absolute mess when it's time to fill out a form. Now, you may be filling it out electronically now. You may be typing into an editable PDF, but you're still having to pay close attention to the label for each field, to the specific directions, put things in in the right order, last name first, you know, whatever it says. But that attention to detail and filling out forms, that is a skill that your teen can practice and you can put that tool in the toolbox for down the road. When it comes to things like college application, if your kid is college bound, this is a great place to work on that skill in particular. 
because every college has its particular protocol that you have to follow if you're applying to go to school there. I'm just going to check my time here. Okay, doing good. And so that is a wonderful time in a high school junior or senior's life to begin really putting some feet to this following directions and filling out forms and following all the steps thing. And um, by the way, if you are coming into that season in your homeschool this year, I'm going to recommend you check out a brand new piece of curriculum at sevensistershomeschool.com. It just came out this week. It is the College Application Essay Writing Guide. When you are applying to colleges, there's typically an essay required, and they are looking for a particular type of essay writing. And some kids who are strong essay writers in general don't exactly understand how the college application essay is unique and how it specifically is looking for um, certain things to be included and things to be sort of shaped a certain way. So I'm going to recommend that you check out Maryland Group's Guide to College Application Essay Writing. Okay, healthy living. How about that? So we've got financial management and we've got attention to detail, following forms, directions, fine print, all that stuff. Now we've got healthy living. <clears throat> and we're not talking about the health curriculum that you did that taught them about the importance of washing your hands. Okay, I mean, that's good. Do that, please, because it is important that we stop spreading germs. But healthy living in regards to time management, stress management, uh, taking responsibility for your own nutritional balance rather than letting mom feed you and she has to make sure that you're eating well. How about relationships, healthy relationships? Um, not just dating relationships, but peer relationships, boss, employee relationships. These are all areas of life where they're going to really be tested as young adults. And if they have not been encouraged while they're still teens, to ask questions. Uh, am I doing this in a way that is healthy? What is the outcome of this choice I'm making likely to be? If they're not examining their lives that way on a regular basis, they're not forming the habit that will put that tool in their toolbox that they'll be able to recognize an unhealthy situation in their life when it arises. And the truth is, guys, it's going to arise. They are not going to live in a cocoon. Each of us as a parent has had seasons of life that were really hard, that had a dysfunctional relationship, that had a, a season with severe sleep deprivation, that had a season where money was so tight that nutrition was lousy. Um, th these things are going to happen, and we need our teens to have in that toolbox the ability to evaluate, to look at a situation and say, this is not healthy, and I'm going to need to make some changes somewhere. Um, time management and prioritizing. Time management is something that they get some practice with in high school. Hopefully you are giving them a lot of practice with that. They should be managing a lot of their own deadlines and um, homework kind of stuff. And you want to encourage that while also overseeing it because, yeah, you're, you're responsible for covering what you have agreed to cover for the year. But in the day-to-day, -day, in the week-to-week, -week, use a syllabus and encourage your teens to take charge of that. But beyond that, there's a bigger thing, which is time management in a more priorities-oriented way. Um, looking at, okay, the next month is coming up, and I've got a class that I'm finishing, and finals are such and such, such, and such a week, and I have grandparents coming in to visit on these two days. And I have um, 20 hours a week at my part-time job, and I am um, starting rehearsals for a show that I'm doing. So, wow, that's a lot to put into a month. Let me take a giant step back. And let me evaluate priorities and let me see okay what needs to get put in there first on my month and what are the things that can go a little bit if they need to um, it's it's not an easy thing and it's something that will take years of practice and it will vary in how you decide that the priorities themselves will vary in different seasons of your life but again practicing that skill of uh, hold on before I just jump to whatever the next urgent thing is I'm gonna take a step back and I'm going to look at the big picture and I'm going to ask myself, okay, what are the most important pieces to this puzzle right now? Final tool, fifth tool to put into the toolbox is the ability to handle failure. Oh, I said the F word, failure. It's going to happen. It really is. We can call it setbacks if that makes us feel more comfortable. How to handle setbacks. How to 
handle challenges. These are nice words. And sometimes all we experience as adults are setbacks or challenges. Sometimes we experience out and out failure. Something just explodes in front of us. And our kids as adults are going to experience failure in a situation where they cannot fix the circumstances. And we need to, while they're teens, not be setting them up for failure so that they can practice, because that would be kind of sadistic, but instead to at least be talking with them about the realities of this, to be helping them deal with the setbacks and challenges that do come up naturally in their world and not sugarcoat everything, not helicopter parent and try to fix everything. Allow them to grieve. Allow them to, to hurt and to face the reality of what living with hurt feels like when you can't just make it go away. Teaching our teens to deal well with failure is one of the most powerful tools you can put into their toolbox. And it is a painful one to put into their hands. It's kind of like, you know, handing a five-year-old a hammer and letting them start learning that skill, you know they're going to smash their thumb at some point. So that feels like, oh, I don't think I should do that. That looks like it's a problem. And when we are putting that tool for how to handle failure into our teen's hands, it feels that way. It feels like, I just want to make the, the hurt go away. But you're giving your child a gift for adulthood if you help them learn to look failure square in the face, to take it to God and say, this is a mess that I cannot fix and to walk through the steps that allow you to survive failure. So those are the five tools that I am recommending today that you put into your teen's toolbox to help with adulting. And that was financial management, and that was following directions, fine print, filling out forms, that kind of stuff, evaluating health or dysfunction in life overall, uh, learning to set priorities and take that, that big picture look at life, and learning to face and handle failure. And if you are looking for curriculum that is gonna help your kid approach academic subjects and high school electives without a lot of busy work where they're just spitting answers back, but instead is encouraging them to really think, because thinking is also a really good skill for adulting, come on over to sevensistershomeschool.com, check out the ebook store, and while you're there, sign up for the email list. Because I'm just going to say, if your name was on that email list earlier this week, you got a coupon. You got $4 off anything you wanted in the store. If you were not on our email list, unfortunately, you did not receive a $4 coupon. So being on the email list means that you get no spam, but just valuable stuff in your inbox that often even has financial value attached to it in the form of special coupon codes that go out only to our subscribers. And I'm also going to encourage you to tune in to the Homeschool High School podcast. In fact, in just a few minutes, I'm getting ready to record another episode. The Homeschool High School podcast at the Ultimate Homeschool Radio Network deals with all kinds of topics, some of which are academic for homeschooling high school and a whole lot of which are life preparation for homeschooling high school. So if today's Facebook Live was helpful for you, check out the podcast because there will be lots of similar topics there that will help you have confidence as you equip your teen for adulting. So I hope you have a lovely day or evening, whatever time you're watching this video, and uh, join me again next Wednesday for another Facebook Live. See ya!